Okay. So uh, I want to uh, welcome my buddy, Lindsay Artkopf, to uh, to join us today. I'm so excited to have you on, Lindsay. Thank you. We were just kind of catching up on how long it's been since we've actually seen each other and how we met. So uh, what I recall is I saw uh, your video for Hit Like a Girl when you won, what was it, in 2015, 2016? Yeah, it was 2015. 2015. Okay. I saw that and I was like, oh my golly, she's fantastic. So I actually looked you up on Facebook and that's how we became Facebook friends. And then I found out that, um, that while, I, while I was at PASIC, I knew that you were going to be there. So I actually passed you your booth and you said, hey, Tammy, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see you. You're, you're on the side. So we actually got to hang out just a little bit. And then we've seen each other at the NAMM shows and things like that. So that's been really fun. But I'm so happy to get to kind of show you off to the public because um, a lot of people know who you are, but just in case they don't um, or they are not up with what you're doing now, I want um, you to have an opportunity to kind of let them know uh, how to follow you and how to support you and um, and what things are going on with you musically now. So um, welcome. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, it's, it's so cool awesome. to watch the, the Drummer Girls United group grow. Yeah, I mean, you were on in the very beginning, I think. Um, so because I started the group four years ago, so and we've mm -hmm. known each other longer than that. So I I know that I, I asked you to join right when we started. So you've seen it grow from a handful of people to now what sixty five hundred or something like that. It's been a kind of a crazy growth. You know? Yeah, it's amazing and seeing you guys like have events and like just I think like I checked the group recently and it was like thousands of people like 6000 people or something. Yeah, uh, 6500. And uh, the last time I checked analytics, um, we're in 99 countries, uh, girl, girls in our group are in 99 countries around the world. So we're pretty well represented all uh, all across um the world and it's it's such a nice thing and it's it's been wonderful for women that were in a country and they thought there were no other women drummers to see hey there's other people here from switzerland or wherever you know um mm -hmm. and so they're finally they're finding some buddies that way as well and i i love that i love bringing people together anyway that's kind of my personality so this is such a great fit. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> it's such a great fit. Okay, so um, you you entered Hit Like a Girl uh, 2015 and won. So kind of, f first, let's go back a little bit. How did you come to drumming? How, why was that the instrument that you chose? Uh, I was six years old, and basically my older sister was going to join band at school, and she needed an instrument, and I was with my dad and her, uh, when they went to the music store and I saw the drums and I just really wanted to play. Um, and then my dad got me a snare drum and some sticks. Um, we came home and then my mom set up drum lessons and then it kind of just went from there. Um, I took lessons with the band teacher at my school. She was a drummer. Um, yeah, it was great. And then after that, I got into more like rock bands and stuff. Um, so I started taking lessons where they had rock ensembles um and then i was into jazz more as i got into high school so then i got a jazz drum teacher um and did like jazz ensembles i went to high school for music um i studied at educational center for the arts which was this uh art school um and after that i went to berkeley um did more drums um and so yeah that was kind of just how it started it just went from there Nice. Okay. Yeah. So after you graduated at Berkeley, how long after that was the hit like a girl? Um, it was during actually. Oh, okay. uh, yeah. So I started Berkeley in 2014 and then like my second year there, I won hit like a girl. That's amazing. So, um, I, I know I've never entered. I'm going to actually judge this year. So yeah, what that. happened? Yeah, I'm That's so great. excited. That's really fun. Um, Dorothea is, I know that she's another one of the judges this year. Aren't you Dorothea? And Penny, Penny is going to be a judge. Are you, are well, you as well, Cindy? I can't remember. Yes, I am. Yeah. I'm the over 40. Okay. So I'm look at us, look at our group, how, how we're representing in so many really cool places. I'm so proud of you guys. 
Mm. His heart is full. Okay. So um, back to that, what happens to a person that wins hit like a girl contest? What, what are the things they can expect if they, they win? Um, a bunch of things. I think honestly, the best part about it is just the community that comes from it and beating people. Um, but there are like prizes and things that happen when you win. Um, I won like a drum set and uh, cymbals, drum microphones, an electronic drum set. Um, wow. for, yeah, for like months, there's just prizes being shipped to my house. So oh like, my gosh. <laughs> yeah, How cool. Yeah, it was really cool. So like every day I'd wake up and like wonder if like a new package was going to come. <laughs> uh, but yeah, and then also I got to play at PASIC, which was amazing. That um, was amazing. And I was yeah. right there watching you too. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, so that was really cool. Um, so yeah, a bunch of stuff happens kind of just all at once. So uh, from that, I'm assuming that companies then um, you're on their radar to, they want you to endorse their products or they want you to do something with their products so that they can get their name out there. So did companies contact you um, in regards to endorsements and other things? Yeah, they did. Um, I think the first endorsement that I got was with Zildjian and it actually kind of worked out because the judge, the weekly judge uh, for the week that I entered uh, included Sarah Hagen, who at the time okay. was uh, the a r rep there. So like she kind of knew me um, through that. Um, and then after that, uh, I think I applied for Vic Firth um, and I got that like a few months later. Um, and then Evans happened around the same time. And then going to PASIC and playing at PASIC really helped because I was already playing there. So then when I met people at the companies there, like Mapex and stuff, it kind of just worked out. Oh, that's that's so awesome. So well yeah. deserved, too. Thank well you. Deserved. Um, okay, so after that experience, um, you're uh, obviously your growth in social media ha has to have exploded because everybody kind of has seen your videos and they saw that you won. And a lot of people follow Hit Like a Girl um, just to see what talent is out there. And then those people tell me that their social media kind of explodes because people are starting them to follow them. So what, what happened with you after that? Did you start, I, I know that you moved fairly recently after that um, to California, because I know that there's so much work there um, for working drummers, as opposed to a lot of the other places in the, in the States. So how did that move come about? Um, yeah, so social media definitely picked up after that. I think it was in part of Hit Like a Girl, but also after I won Hit Like a Girl, it kind of just gave me this motivation and this confidence about drumming um, mm -hmm. that allowed me to realize like, if I could do this, then I could do anything. I could, you know, build more social media. I could like be a drummer as a career. All this stuff that I wanted to do kind of seemed like I could really do it mm -hmm. after that because it was just proof of concept, I guess. Um, but yeah, after that, I started posting a lot more. Um, and then I moved to LA, like, maybe two years later, or a year and a half later. Um, so yeah, I've been doing a lot of like gigs and getting work, um, playing drums for people. Um, and I also like teach drum lessons. So it's been like a lot at once. Oh, that's fantastic, though. So Thank you. Um, playing gigs, uh, do you have uh, specific bands that you are the drummer for? Or do you do a lot of sub in things or play for artists as they come through? Or how do, how is that working out? It's more independent. Like I've, I've gotten like a bunch of cool gigs um, on like the music side of things. I've played for this YouTuber called named uh, Sam Shuey. Um, and I played for like a music video that he did. Um, I do like gigs like all the time um, for artists that need a drummer. You know, obviously COVID is going on, but like before that it was a lot of like local gigs. And then um, I did this tour um, with a drummer named Chastity Ashley. Do you know her? I don't, I don't think. I should connect you guys. Um, yeah, please do. Uh, it was uh, this small like T-Mobile a tour where we had to like play drums um, for like a bunch of events at hotels. Um, 
And then other than that, like it's just been a lot of like recording sessions. Um, recently, I uh, got this new studio and I've been doing a lot of like drum tracks, tracking people's songs on drums. Um, and then the past like three years or so, just been getting into producing a lot. Um, and I play guitar and bass too. So I help people kind of put their songs together um, and produce them. That's fantastic. Thank you. What a talent you are. Thank you. That's awesome. Okay, so now that you're out there, how is it that artists are finding you? What What is the, I mean, are you in a, a, a musician's union or how does that work that they they know that you're available? I'm not in a musician's union. Um, I don't know a lot of people that are actually. Um, <clears throat> usually it's it's kind of like, uh, a combination of things like sometimes it's just like Instagram or Facebook I hear about a gig and I'll like reach out or people that I've played for before um, will recommend me um, kind of word of mouth kind of thing or if like a musician I know is leading a band and they'll ask me to play it's kind of it kind of like comes from all places but it uh-huh. takes a while to build um, yeah. Yeah, so it's just like when I got here, especially I would go to jams a few times a week um, and try to like build relationships with people so that when gigs came up that they would know me and stuff like that. Yeah. And yeah, like I said, it's kind of just a slow build. Yeah, and I tell I, I tell that to people constantly in, in music. And I'm sure that's true for acting as well. But in music, specifically from my experience, it's all about who you know. It's the relationships that you build. Because mm-hmm. um, everybody wants to do business with people they know, like, and trust, right? So for sure. you, you have to have that, you know, likability, professional attitude. Um, and then you need to build the relationships and have the have the personality where people do like you. They, they want to work with you. They know that you're not... Um, going to be a prima donna and um and that you're easy um very flexible and knowledgeable about your instrument and that just tends to once people start to work with a person like that those people keep getting getting hired and so you have to build that reputation um truly but then you have to make those connections you have to make those relationships so Mm -hmm. yeah it looks like you're doing all the right things yeah thank you (laughs) okay so during COVID, I know that for people that are professional musicians, me included, it shut down. I had 35, um, I had 35 gigs on the book that closed in one day. And wow. so for a lot of people, that's, that's a thousands and thousands of dollars gone. Um, so during COVID, how then um, has it been for you? Did you do a lot of online teaching or did you, um, are, I know that you said that you're recording tracks. So are you doing that, you know, from your home or from a home studio, that kind of thing for people? What, what's been going on with you during the COVID pandemic? Yeah, I mean, I'm really grateful because like you said, like so many people have lost their work and it's been so sad. Mm-hmm. Um, for me, the main thing that I've been doing is teaching drum lessons. Like I usually have at least 25, like 20 to 25 weekly students at a time. Oh, wow. That's Um, great. Yeah. So I've been, that's just another thing that I was building up. Um, And it's always kind of been like this constant flow of work just in case like gigs don't happen for a while. Mm -hmm. Um, Of course, like I never expected gigs not to happen for like a year. Um, (laughs) yeah but uh that was my main thing during COVID and I was really lucky that everybody you know was able to continue lessons like I did lose a bunch of students but I also gained some I think a lot of people kind of wanted to uh, start learning drums or like get back into it once the pandemic started so it did kind of even out um from time to time, I get gigs now, and it's starting to pick up again. Um, but I, I have gotten gigs like recording drum tracks for people. Um, mm-hmm. But I haven't played a gig in so long. Like I think it's been like a year, probably now. Yeah, I know everybody is so ready to either go to concerts and just be part of the audience, or to be back on the stage. Because for people like y- you and me, and so many people in our group, that's where we. That's where we 
our happiest. We're on a stage with a band that we love mm -hmm. to play with and just be part of, you know, see the uh, what the audience is doing back because they love the music and it's just so much fun. Um, I miss it so much. Uh, yes. I get to do some of it now. Uh, things are opening up a lot in Oklahoma. Good. So I'm, I'm playing gigs some now and it's so much fun, but golly for a year, that was, that was rough not to play, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, so were you already doing online lessons before this started and it just kind of got to continue or were, were most of your students coming in to uh, in-person lessons and then you switched to online? Um, I've been teaching since like 2015, I think. Um, and I've just been building it since then. It was before COVID, it was like half online, half in person. So people mm -hmm. would come to the studio. But now it's like all online. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the people that came in would just switch to online. Yeah. And so how was that for you? Because I know a lot of teachers, myself included, I can do the online thing. And in a lot of ways, it's um, in some ways, it's better just because you can go from one student to the next to the next and not worry about, you know, people coming in and out and that kind of thing, because that takes quite a while to talk to the parents and that kind of thing. Uh, but on the other hand, you can't walk around their kid and see how their body position is to the kid or really see all the angles for their feet and their hands and that kind of thing. So how did that change for you as far as being your teaching style and those kinds of things? Yeah. Uh, well, I, like I said, I half of it online already. So I already had an idea of what it was like to teach online. Mm -hmm. um, and like you said, there's kind of benefits to both. Like it's easier to teach people online because if a lesson is an hour, it's truly just an hour, like signing on, signing off. Right. Um, but with on, with in person, it's kind of like you were talking about, um, with meeting people, bring them in, you know, like everything kind of just uh, adds up with time. And that's something that I've realized too, like I've actually gained more time uh, by teaching everybody online um, because it's kind of just easier. It's not that difficult, I guess, to kind of adjust. Like, I think the main thing is that we can't play together in time. That's, yeah. you know, I mean, it's, yeah. it's fine, like being able to see the angles like it's you have to like have them move the camera um and you can't see it quite as well um but yeah I think not playing together in time is the biggest drawback for me too because yeah. I loved I loved trading fills with people and having them um play along with the beat because I could see if they're a little bit off I could hear that and and this way you know you're about a second or two behind so you really can't play together mm -hmm. but 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 like you said you find ways to make it work and and a lot of people really really love uh zoom lessons my students so I'll love that and everybody that I know that's taking right now they they really enjoy it mm -hmm. and I I agree I think um be having online lessons it allows the time to be a little more concentrated. It seems like you can get a lot more within that hour than when when they were coming in and out. It just seemed like the pace was a little slower, so we weren't getting as much done. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, okay. So now that things are starting to open up, do you have some things on the books or do you have some things that, um, that you're looking forward to getting done this year? Yeah, I do. Uh, my main thing, especially with the pandemic and everything, uh, has been making my own original music. Um, and right now I'm finishing up producing it and recording all the tracks. I'm going to release like five songs starting this summer. Okay. Um, yeah, so I've been... That's exciting. Yeah, I'm super excited about it. Uh, so it'll be uh, like five songs. I'm going to release a song a month starting maybe around like June or July. And it'll be uh, really like indie pop style music um, with like a little bit more flavor of drums in it, if that makes sense. It does. Yeah. So I'm really excited about that. Um, and I've been putting most of my time into that. Well, is so is that kind of your favorite type of music to play? Yeah, um, I spend a lot of time like playing jazz in like high school and college and then moving to LA, I've played like everything from, you know, pop to jazz to whatever um, was needed really. Um, but yeah, this is kind of like, I kind of blended all of the styles that I really like into this sound. Um, and it's like indie, pop, kind of fusion-y. Um, yeah, it's kind of 
this original music that I came up with. That's exciting. I can't wait Thank to hear you. it. Thank you. Yeah, that's going to be really fun. Yeah. Um, okay, so since you were one of the originals in the group, what what has had this, what has, let me put the words together better. <laughs> My brain doesn't work half the time. What has being part of this community um, done for you? I think it's shown me that a lot of people go through the exact same things that I go through, especially as a female drummer. I mean, like most of the time, if I see somebody post something or a question or even like an experience they've had, I can relate to it. Mm -hmm. And it's so great that everybody gets on and responds and like starts this conversation with them and makes them feel welcome. I think the best part of the group, like everybody says all the time, is just that it's so welcoming and you feel like you could just be comfortable and like talk about drumming or whatever else is going on. I love that. That's the way it's supposed to be. Yes. I want it to be very positive, very encouraging. Those are my, my two main focuses. I mean, outside of drums, of course, all of the posts and comments should be kind of drumming related, but like you said, we're all people and we all go through different experiences within, you know, our drumming learning and, and education and all of that. So I'm glad that we have a safe place that we all get to share things with each other and know that we're not going to be hammered by somebody because we're sharing something from our heart. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've never seen that. I've seen people being very, very um, loving towards each other in the group. And I love that. And I am so proud of you guys for fostering that type of um, atmosphere and keeping it going. <laughs> so Everybody's awesome. thankful that you started it. Yeah, well, I am. I I'm even more thankful because it means so much to me. Of course, now that it's, it's my full time job, um, and it's been wonderful because um, you know, even when all of my gigs got canceled, I get I got to keep doing this, and mm-hmm. it's not a huge money maker doing these. You know, I don't charge for anything, but um, the only thing that I charge for really, uh, besides the clinics that I do, um, is for the merch. And I only did that because my husband made a t-shirt for me and everybody was like, how do I get one of those? <laughs> I was like, well, this was just a Christmas present, you know? So I started uh, looking into manufacturers that could make some of our designs and things. And that's how that kind of all started, but that's kind of kept things floating. And now people um, will tell me from all parts of the world that they buy all the merch because it makes them feel closer to us, even though they don't live here close or maybe net can't go to any of our clinics or concerts. They feel like they're part of us when they're wearing our clothes. That's so amazing. I, I love that. I love that whole sense of community um, that even just buying a t-shirt can provide for someone. So mm-hmm. I, I think it's wonderful. Anyway, um, I've got a question for you. So as you were growing up, I know that you had lots of uh, incredible instruction, but is there, is there some specific drummers that you um, th- then when you were starting out or even now still really watch closely and, and, um, and try to kind of mimic or learn from their style? Yeah, definitely. Um, one of my favorite drummers is Chris Coleman. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, he's probably like my all time favorite drummer. Um, And I always just watch his videos and I try to like be my try my best to emulate what he plays. Um, And I went to a clinic of his back in 2019. It was at Guitar Center near where I live. Um, And he was there and he actually like knew who I was and we, we, yeah. (laughs) And then um, he was like, I'm here for another day. Do you want to hang out tomorrow? And I was like, yeah, of course. And then um, we ended up getting uh, breakfast together. And then he came to my studio and he like gave me a lesson. Um, Yeah, we just hung out. And that's so cool. Yeah, he gave me like all this great advice and a lot of stuff to work on. And it was amazing. It was like a dream. It was so cool. That's, that's amazing. I've gotten to meet him um, at the Mm -hmm. Drumeo Festival last year before the pandemic hit. And we got to hang out just a bit. Um, But he is one of the nicest people I have ever met. Just like he's such a good guy, but oh my gosh, his skill level is just in in the stratosphere. Yeah. Yeah. He's so, he's so great. So um, outside of Chris, who, who else is up there for you? Um, drummer wise 
Uh, I love Steve Jordan for Groove. Um, yeah. And then, of course, like the classics, like Vinnie Caliuta, Steve Gadd. Um, those are probably like my top favorite drummers. Uh, but like I'm always inspired honestly just like looking through Instagram with like modern drummers that are mm -hmm. making all this cool new stuff I love that too um, Mark Juliana is great um, Nerzy there's just so many there's so many great there drummers are so out there many. oh my gosh you're right <laughs> yeah it's crazy I I look through a lot of videos because I'm I'm friends with a ton of drummers on Facebook and different things and I look through their videos and I'm like, oh my gosh, how, how do they do some of these things? It's just, mm -hmm. it's not just the skills, but, um, the creativity that I see is yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm more, I'm almost more impressed by that, by how they come up with some of the things that they do mm -hmm. than the ability to actually do it. Because a lot of us can learn those things. Um, but the fact that they came up with it first. I, I really think that that's, that's truly impressive. And the things that Chris Coleman does just, oh my gosh, you're, you're so right yeah. about him. <laughs> such a, such a cool guy. Um, if there was a drummer that you could do a project with um, outside of Chris, cause I know that you love him. And so do I, <laughs> so do we all, <laughs> is there anyone that you would really love to work with? Wow. That's a hard question. I mean, so many, uh, maybe like Dave Weckl. Oh, he's gosh. another one of my favorites. Yeah. Yeah. I love his finesse and how smooth he is with his playing. Um, and he can play almost anything. He really can. And I, what I love about some of his things, he doesn't have to fill every bar with just as many notes as possible. But um, when he is playing fast and he's doing a lot of the kind of gospel choppy things, uh, you can hear every single note, like everything has a purpose. Because mm -hmm. um, I do hear people playing the fast gospel chops, but it's a little sloppy or it's a, it's so fast that you really can't hear one note from the next. It all just kind of blends. But mm -hmm. Dave is so good about, you can hear everything that he's doing. Like everything has a purpose. He's thought through. It's not just coming out as he plays. He knows what he's doing. I love that about his playing. Yeah. He's a true musician. I think that's kind of the difference is it that's what makes uh that's the difference between good and great is if you're musical or not and like you were saying like so many people just have these patterns you know the, these like 16th note or sextuplet patterns that they just throw around and just reorchestrate and that that's like one thing you could do and that's great but it's kind of a whole nother level when you develop phrases and purpose yeah. in each note yeah yeah and and put dynamics in your playing because mm -hmm. a lot of people when you hear them play, everything is at the same level. And yeah. yes, they're fast. Yes, they're, they've, they're creative, but geez, that's not really musical. Mm -hmm. And you're, you're exactly right about that. Um, okay. So if I were to watch you warm up, what would I see you do? Uh, usually if I'm just warming up, it's something simple. Uh, like I'll start with singles, doubles, paradiddles. I try to uh, just focus on the foundations and the basics and like when I'm teaching too I try to emphasize that if you know the foundations and you can really execute them then that's kind of everything you know it's but if everything with your foundation is a little off then that's just going to spill over into everything so I would really try to just go back to the foundations of the rudiments um, and stuff like that uh, I'll come up with warm-ups that I do um, and I try to create warm-ups that have turnarounds, so like right, right, or left, left at the end, so that I could do both sides. Um, and yeah, it'll usually just revolve around singles, doubles, paradiddles, double paradiddles, um, stuff like that. I, I try to keep it simple. Fantastic. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, well, I'm going to open it up to uh, the people that have joined us. Do you guys have some questions for uh, Lindsay? Maya, did you raise your hand? Oh, yes. Hi, Maya. <laughs> did you have a question for Lindsay? Not, not yet. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I thought I saw a hand go up. Um, anyone else? Okay, Dorothea. Just going back about teaching students, mm -hmm. this I do because I'm doing virtual also. So I will put my click on and they can hear it. And I will mm -hmm. 
And then I have them play with me. So they are playing with me. Mm -hmm. Tell that they're playing with me. Exactly. But they are playing with me. And we play it several times over and over. And then I stop and tell them to continue. So they're still listening to my click. But then I can tell if they are playing it correctly or not. And that's uh, that's great. I, I had to develop that because of that delay. It was just being a pain. So that's how I get through it. And they seem to be coming along fine. I can't play along with them because then, you know, they start listening to what I'm doing and right. get messy. I just ignore what they're doing and they're playing with me, whether it's rudiments or patterns around the kit. And then I stop and then I watch them. And then I'll tell them, okay, put your click on say 80 or whatever. And then they'll have that same tempo and then they'll do it. And I can hear them with their click. That's, so I that's a genius. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. I'm going to try that. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Hopefully um, that'll. Dorothea, I have a quick question for you then. Um, okay. I know there are a lot of platforms for us to all teach on um, online. So there's Zoom and Skype and lots of different ways to do it. What What is the way that you've chosen? Um, what way do you feel like is less laggy or maybe a better picture, better sound quality? They're, they're both about the same. The two that I use are FaceTime and mm -hmm. Skype. So okay. Half my students do FaceTime. The other half do Skype, and it's about the same. Have you found that, that to be true as well, Lindsay? Yeah, I usually use Skype because then I could share my screen. Um, like I could share a PDF that we're working on. With FaceTime, I think you can only do the video. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Very good. Um, okay. So do any of you... Um, others i i can't everybody's got pictures up so i don't i can't see them live but do do any of you guys have other pic, um, questions for Lindsay? nope okay <laughs> okay <laughs> did you have anything else that you would like to share with us Lindsay? um i think i i think i mostly talked about the stuff that i have going on um I'll share my songs to the Drummer Girls United group when they come out. Um, it'll be on Spotify, like all of the streaming platforms. So I'll be sure to share all of that. And then I'm going to make videos to go along with everything. Fantastic. You, I would love what was that. The, what was the release date on that? I'm sorry. This is Debbie. I, and congratulations on that. It's so great. We have a uh, multi-instrumentalist. I wish I could do that. I can't even sing. So you're, you're awesome for that. <laughs> Thank you so much. You can totally do it if you want to like learn any other instrument. It's just it's just like learning drums, really. Uh, but uh, I think it's going to be around like mid June. Sweet. I'll look for that. I'll definitely you. support you. Um, you. Also, Lindsay, is there music already out there that you've drummed on, like that you recorded uh, for for artists and that kind of thing that we could find? Um. There are songs like on Spotify and stuff. I think I'll make a little playlist maybe and share it. That would be beautiful. Yeah. And mm -hmm. also, um, before we sign off, if you could go to the chat area uh, now and then put where they can find you, where they can, if you have a YouTube channel, if you have Instagram, TikTok, whatever it is. Um, I want people from our group. And once we put this on uh, YouTube and my, our other um social media platforms. I want people to be able to support you uh, and your music career. So uh, just put all of that out there. And you guys that are watching, please um, go and follow Lindsay and um, support her. So thank you so much. And thank you so much for having me. This was so fun. It is fun. I'm sorry that we don't get to see each other much, but next time I'm in Cali, hopefully we will. Um, I'm planning on being at the next NAM show whenever that mm -hmm. is. Hopefully, hopefully in January. Fingers crossed. Yes, definitely. <laughs> yes. Um, oh, Maya, go right ahead. Um, I still I remember seeing an uh, an older video of you at a for a Berkeley audition where you use mallets. Um, oh yeah. Um, and I wonder if you still do that, because um, I did. I have played timpani also, um, and I don't know if you use other anything else, you know, or unusual um, things on your drum kit um, for creating different sounds and tones. 
Yeah, I mean, I never stop trying new sticks and trying new textures and everything. Um, I love like the sound of timpani mallets on cymbals and even drums. It just yes. gives this kind of powerful feel. And I love doing rolls on like the cymbals and the drums with timpani mallets. Um, Vic Firth has a lot of cool like sticks you could try um, too that I like. Uh, like even some of their brushes, they have like these dreadlock uh, things too, they're called. Um, they're kind of like really hard brushes and you could get some like symbol scraping stuff going on. So yeah, I'm always trying out different textures. Yeah, um, I, I use the same thing. I do the double-sided sticks that have the mallet on one end and I then a, a thin stick on the other. Cause I use the, I play a lot of worship uh, music mm -hmm. and so when you have when you're doing kind of a softer song but you need a cymbal swell you don't want to use your stick necessarily because that's kind of a harder clangier sound building up that cymbal swell but if you have that mallet it's just such a nice you know beautiful sound and then you can flip it over really easily and do um you know use the stick to articulate on the right or whatever or do a cross stick pattern and so it's such a nice way to have both um and until you drop that and then you pick up regular sticks to build the song up it's so, it's so cool so if you um if you ever want to use that kind of thing you can get those i don't know if mine is uh, made from Vic Firth or Zildjian. I can't remember the brand that I use. You said you have those as well, Lindsay? I used to. I think they were like Travis Barker Zildjian sticks. No, maybe that's maybe that's what mine are. I can't remember exactly, but I love them. And if they ever break, I will re replace them exactly because I use them literally every week. I, I think they're wonderful. Do you have anything like that, Maya? I have a, a I, I love the reeds. Um, I love, I have different mounts. I have, I played marimba also. So I have a lot of marimba. Okay, sure. Vary between timpani and marimba mallet sometimes. And then the, um, the hot rods. Yeah. The hot rods. I enjoy different textures from that. Um, and someone actually got me for practice if I ever didn't have a pad, but I'm not sure how I feel about them. Sticks with like the rubber tips almost like a like pad like a drum pad tip but I'm not sure if I feel about those yet in terms of um practice or um on the cymbals <laughs> yeah I've, I've seen those I've never played with them but I think that the purpose behind them is instead of getting a practice pad you can actually have the rubber on the end of the sticks and you can put it on any surface and it's kind of the same concept but I've never played with those I, I wonder how what they would feel like they work great on your countertop in the kitchen. <laughs> yeah, I, I know you do a lot at your countertop as far as uh, your videos and things. Those are really clever, by the way. I, I love them. Sure. Okay. Um, also with the hot rods, Cooper Groove has a, a pair of, they're like the hot rods, so they're the reeds on the end, but they did a regular stick on the other end. So if you're playing and you need to do a cross stick, you know, the click on the snare, you can use the hot rod on the hi-hat or the cymbals or whatever, but then you have the click um, available and then you can flip it over and have the hot rod again. So that's kind of a cool, a cool piece that I, I use that a lot. The only thing I don't like about the hot rods is that they break so easily. Those little reeds break off. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but I, I replace them a lot. <laughs> um, Lindsay, do you have any equipment that is kind of your favorite go-tos? Yeah, um, I mean, I think my favorite piece of equipment is cymbals. That's like the most personal to me. Like I could play on somebody else's drum set as long as I bring my cymbals. Um, but I love my Zildjian's that I have. Um, I love these fat hats that I got. They're a prototype they made uh 15 and 13 inch of uh, fat hats but i have the 16 inch prototype that they made um because mm -hmm. i saw them at the factory one time when i went and i loved how they sounded they never ended up coming out with them but so i think they might be like one of the only ones um nice yeah so i love using those um i also love my 14 inch uh k constantinople hi-hats mm -hmm. um and then this like a complex ride symbol that I have. Those are probably my favorites. That's beautiful. 
Yeah, <laughs> symbols are are massively important to me as well. Um, I don't think other instrumentalists <laughs> understand how important they are. So if I show up at any gig, I don't care what it is, my symbol bag is always on my shoulder because I don't play anybody else's mm -hmm. symbols. And it, it is yeah. such a personal thing. It's like a professional guitarist. They have their their footboards and they're specifically made for what they like and they would just never hook up to somebody else's, you know? Yeah. That's a great like comparison. That. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, what's different though. And I, I find this to be so funny. A lot of guitarists will go to shows and they want to watch the other guitarists, but guitarists do not like to share their knowledge. I've found uh, a lot. And so they'll literally put a towel over their footboard. They don't want anyone <laughs> to see what they have where drummers are opposite. We share information constantly. We want people to know what we know. We want to make it easier for drummers that are learning to know what we know so they can build from there and, and get better. But I see a lot of other instruments, they're not so <clears throat> giving in their knowledge. And I don't, I'm not really sure why that is. Drummers are a different cut of people, I think. Um, but I Definitely. love that we're very, um, very giving with the knowledge that we have. Have you seen that as well, Lindsay? For sure. Yeah, I've had that conversation with so many people so many times. Um, yeah, it's this community and I, I haven't seen any type of community like this within other instruments. I, I haven't either. And it, it's kind of mind blowing. I don't know why, you know, guitarists or bass players or whatever it is. I don't know why they're not as um, educational thinking um, towards their community as drummers are, but drummers, we're constantly giving clinics or we're constantly doing free lessons online or whatever it is. And I just don't see that so much with other instrumentalists or even vocalists. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know why that is, but it just seems to be, that, that just seems to be, I, I, I don't understand why it is, but I'm glad that we're the way that we are as, at, at least. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, okay. I'm not sure. Um, I was going to ask you, so when you go to a gig, what is it that are your, besides your symbols, what is it that you have to take with you? Uh, my sticks. I also have in-ears that I use. Um, so I could plug in to a monitor if, if needed. What brand uh, do you use? In-ears? M-E-E -E Audio. Okay. Yeah, I have the, I think they're called M-E-6 in-ear monitors. Um, what else? Uh... My kick pedal usually, like that's something that I can't really, like I could play on another kick pedal, but it's most comfortable if I bring my own. Which one is it? What what do you use? Uh, I use the Mapex Armory. Okay. Yeah. Um, I also really love pearl pedals. Those are like comfortable. Like if there's a pearl pedal, like I'll play that, that's fine. Um, mm -hmm. That Those are like the main things, a snare drum maybe. Okay, what's your yeah. go-to snare? Uh, right now, I have the Mapex Armory snare. Nice. Yeah, I, I used to have an Armory uh, kit, and man, that sounded so good. It did, yeah. Yeah, those are those are great kits. They're they're beautiful. Yeah, it's absolutely. Well, um, if no one else has a question, because I don't want to shut it down before you guys get all of your questions answered, but if no one else has a question, then I oh, Maya, did you have something else? Go ahead. Yeah. Oh, I think you're muted. Go ahead. I, can you hear me now? Yes. I just have a theory that as drummers, drumming was originally a group activity as opposed uh -huh. to some other instruments that have really, from my experience, been very solo oriented or um, mm. really even a duet kind of experience. So I feel like it might be kind of ingrained in us to be more of a group. Have a you group might be onto something there. <laughs> I like that. I like that theory. Yeah, that's great. It actually is. Definitely. Um, Lindsay, please, please share um, as many of your videos or uh, events or anything that you want to share with us. I know that everyone would be very excited to, to see what you're doing and um, to support you in some way. Thank you. I will. Also, I'm going to let you go. Lindsay, thank you so much. Um, thank you so much for having time me. To, to be here and hang out with us. I hope thank you had you. fun. Thank you, I did. And thank you guys for coming. You bet. 
Um, I'm going to be editing videos all afternoon until I have band rehearsal tonight. Um, and then um, I will let you know when this gets uh, posted to our group, I'll tag you on it. And then also on our YouTube and other social media platforms. And then you can share away from there. If that's cool. Definitely. Thank you so okay. much. I'll talk to you guys soon. All right. Take care, you guys. Talk to you Thank soon. You. Bye. Bye. Bye, Bye. Bye, Kathy. Bye, Bye you guys. Bye, Maya. Bye.